Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks, all of the day. And today's problem is find number of closed islands and it is a hard level problem. So I was not able to upload the video in the morning. The thing is that for some unknown reason, uh, Geeks for Geeks didn't update the problem statement today. And I guess it was updated sometime in the afternoon. And since I have my end semester exams going on, I was not available to solve the question. And uh, it's now that I've got some time and I'm recording this video in the evening. Anyways, before starting the video, just a small request to you guys. If at the end of this video, you feel that this video was of any help to you or that you were able to derive some value from this video, then do consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to like uh, share your thoughts on this particular question. Or even if you have some uh, th something to share, you can write it down in the comments as your engagement with this particular video will help the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will recommend the video to more people like you who want to solve these problems. Right. So let us quickly start with the problem discussion now. I believe like uh, this problem was not actually hard because there's nothing special about this problem. It's a simple uh, DFS. But still like uh, I, I was not able to understand the problem statement completely. I just misunderstood it and that is why I made a few wrong submissions as well. Anyways, we are going to discuss the problem statement and how we can solve this. So this particular statement says that we have been given a binary matrix. So binary matrix means we have been given a matrix consisting of zeros and ones, right? So one denotes land and zero denotes water. We have to find the number of closed islands. So they have given the definition of a closed island and this is what I misinterpreted. I was not able to understand it in the right manner initially. So this, this says that we have a, a closed island is a group of ones surrounded by zeros only. On, on all the boundaries, right? In simple words, a closed island is an island whose none of the ones lie in the edges of the matrix. So let me just show you with an example. So we have this particular test case given to us. You see, one of the closed islands is in the bottom right. Is in the bottom right here, right here. Right, how is this a closed island? So we have to consider this particular one. Right. From this one, you can go upwards, you can go downwards and you can go left and you can go right. Right. Since all of the four sides, it is surrounded by water. So it is a closed end. Right. Now, let me just erase this part and write it for the other one. The second closed island is this one. I'll tell you in a while how this is a closed island. So let's say this is also some boundary. Right. So for every one, you will see that if you go from the top from this one and if you go upwards from this one or this one or this one, you will find a zero. If you go left from this one, if you go left from this, if you go left from this one, you will find a zero down zero down zero down zero and again down zero. You go upward from this one, you will find a zero. You go right from this one, you will find a zero. So you see on all the sides, it is surrounded by water, right? So what is not actually a valid closed island? So let me just show you. So if you have some island like this, this is the grid, original grid. Let's say we have the grid like this. So this is, uh, let's say a land. This is land. Let's say this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And let's say 1 is also here, 0, 0. Right. So you see that for this particular island, it is having 0 at the top, 0 on the left and right as well. But for this particular one, we have a 1 at the down, which is also on the edge of the matrix. Right. So any one. Right, which is part of an island, right? So if you are considering, so let me just write it more clearly. So you, if you are trying to consider this particular connected component, you see we are trying to consider this particular connected component as one. So even if one of the one of the ones in this particular connected component lies on the edge of the matrix, so this this row is an edge, this column is an edge, these two columns, and these this row is also an edge, right? So if even one of the mat, uh, ones of the connected component lies on the edge of the matrix, then it is not considered a valid closed island, right? So it will be only considered a valid closed island if there is no one such that it lies on the edge of the uh, grid, right? So basically what you can do is you can start from any of the ones such that it lies inside this particular area, right? It should not lie on the edge. So you can start the, your DFS from any one of these ones. If there is one present here, you can just continue a normal DFS. And for each of those uh, ones, what you can do is uh, you can check whether it lies on the uh, edge or not. If if there is anyone in the connected component that lies on the edge, then for the whole connected component, the answer will be zero. So we'll consider the contribution of that particular connected component to be zero, right? So let me just quickly repeat what I just said uh, to like make it more clear to you. 
what we are going to do is we are just going to do simple dfs so what we are going to do is our approach is doing simple dfs so let me just write approach here so our approach is to do a simple dfs right so we will count the number of connected components so we discussed for some of the connected components we don't need to count them how do we actually check check whether we need to count the connect current connected component or not if for any of those uh, ones or any one of the land in the current current component it lies on the edge of the matrix that means we don't have to count them right so we can make maintain some kind of flag which will uh, uh, like keep record of the connected current connected component and if for any of those items in the current connected component it lies on the edge we can mark this flag as zero so, right so at the end if this flag is one if flag is one flag is one for the current connected component then only will increment our answer because in that case it will be a valid close eye right so let me just uh, like show you show you this particular thing in the code and it will be more clear to you so what i've done is i've created two arrays dx and dy so this is just for simple uh, dfs stuff you might if you have done grid dfs then you must be familiar of this technique where these uh, dx and dy are denoting some values let me just also explain you what it's not so you see so i can just take a screenshot and then here right so let's say you are at a current index uh, x comma y right so if you add if you do x plus dx of 0 and y plus dy of 0 you see that you will move upwards in the grid because x will become min x minus 1 and y will remain at, as it is so this is for upwards similarly this is for downwards because x will become x plus 1 and y will y will be as it is and this is for left because x will be as it is and y will become y minus 1 this is for right because x will become as it is and y will become y plus 1 so basically you just have to run a loop from i to 0 to 4 and for each of the iteration you have to just do x plus dx of i and y plus dy of i this way you will be able to traverse all the four directions right so how is this uh, method, method helpful if you do this you don't have to write for all the four directions you don't have to write separate conditions you can just write one simple for loop and you can just calculate the new index as new index is equal to x plus dx of i and new y is equal to y plus dy of i right so this is very important and you will find this very helpful if you are doing grid dfs or grid bfs now uh, what we'll do is so i've created some functions so this is first of all a double dimension visited vector i also have a valid vector to check whether the current uh, point in the grid is a valid grid or not i also have a close function so this function will help me verify whether the current uh, uh, connected component forms a closed component or not so we'll discuss this part later on first of all let us look at the main logic so what I am doing is I am initializing my answer with 0 for all the in, uh, points. So I am initializing my answer uh, i with 1 and I am going to less than n minus 1. So I am just making sure right away that I am not taking anyone on anyone from the edges. Right. Similarly, I am doing for the j. If the current index is valid, I will discuss what is valid this thing right now. But first let us look what is what if it is valid. I will just make start a DFS call and if the current component is a closed component then in that in that case dfs of this particular will return true and one will be added to my answer if dfs returns false that means the current component is not a valid component that we are looking for and it will add zero to our answer right so let us just quickly discuss the valid function first so what is happening is if x is less than one or x is greater than or equal to n minus one so again i'm just not going into this particular part you will see that i'm not uh, like taking this particular part even if some array element goes to this particular part it will be marked as not valid right similarly for y if y is less than 1 or y is greater than equals to m minus 1 i'll return 0 so these positions will not be considered valid right now if the current position is visited already visited or the current matrix is equal to 0 so you see i have taken not matrix of x y that means this condition will be true when matrix of x y will be equal to 0 in that case i'll return 0 because it is not land it is water right and this states that it is visited this states that the current index is water in both of the cases, either one of this means two, I'll return zero, otherwise I'll return one. So I'll be able to find whether the current index is a valid index or not. What do we mean by a valid index? It should lie inside the grid, it should not have a zero, and it should not be visited. Right. So these are the three conditions that I'm checking here. Now uh, I mark the current index as visited, where where I visit, and I initialize my OK with one. So OK means that uh, my current connected component will be a closed component. I am assuming this. I'm trying to traverse all the four directions as I as I've already discussed. I found new x as x plus dx of i, new y as y plus dy of i. Now I check with this new x and new y. So what I'm doing is if 
I am like for example for this particular one this particular one I just go to the down right so I am encountering this zero right so if at this particular position there is a one that means my current component will not be a closed component so this is what I am checking so if x is equal to 0 or x is equal to n minus 1 this is either it is the first row or the last row similarly y is equal to 0 or y is equal to n minus 1 either it is the first column or last column like this and the element at that particular index is 1 that is matrix of xy I will return 0 in that case the answer will be false because this will not form a closed component if this is not true I will just return 1 so if my current component is not forming a closed component you see I have written if not closed then ok will be equal to 0 so that means I have found that this component will not be a closed one in case this condition is not executed I will anyways have to traverse the next indexes so if the next index is a valid index that means it lies inside the grid it it is a valid land and it is not already visited I will visit it and I will mark my ok as ok and with this particular value so what I am doing is even if my current answer is ok but one of the children is returning false so the answer is not ok then I am just taking their and so if I take and so even if one of the children returns false that the current component is not a closed component the whole answer will be false for the component right so at the end I can just return the value of ok and this will uh, tell me whether the current component was a closed one or not so if this returns true then one will be added to my answer here otherwise zero will be added at the end after all of this is executed Z, uh, my, I will return my answer value right so this was all about today's problem of the day and I am again repeating that this problem I felt not was not very difficult I had some issues with understanding the problem statement but again once I understood the problem statement it was uh, this simple implementation of DFS so let me just quickly submit and show you that this works and uh, again I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution and you see that this passes all the test cases I hope that this video was helpful for you and if it was you found this video helpful then consider dropping like on this video don't forget to like uh, share your thoughts in the comments also share this channel with your friends and if you have not already subscribed please consider subscribing because i'll see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet so till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye